And we're joined now by uh, Stephanie Rainey. Thanks for taking your time out. I'm sure you're, you're busy writing and stuff like that in the lockdown. Uh, hey, you're very welcome. Uh, yeah, it, lockdown has actually been surprisingly busy. Um, I think it's because, you know, I've been on a kind of a small break from releasing music, just actually recording stuff and getting stuff ready. And now we're kind of getting to the point where, you know, we're, we're ramping to start releasing stuff again. So things have gotten unexpectedly busy, um, but it's great. You know, it's nice to be at home and I've, I've been enjoying it. It's not too bad. That, that, that's great. Can I just ask, um, if we go all the way back, your love of music, where did that first come from? I think, like, for me, um, my, my parents were really into music. And my dad used to sing to me a lot when I was a kid, you know, to try and get me to go to sleep. And right. I can still remember that, you know. Um, and he used to sing, it was never like lullabies, it was always like Neil Young songs or Crosby, Stills and Nash songs and, right, you know, right, all right. that kind of stuff. So I just became a huge music fan when I was a child. Like I was obsessed with, but I was obsessed with like songwriters. So like people like Jimmy McCarthy, uh, Neil Young, just uh, like real proper like songwriting stuff. And it just never left me. So I, it kind of goes back to me being four, five, six and just progressed from there. So it's, it's more the songs that you like as opposed to like different musicians. It's more songs you're drawn to. I just love songs like I, I, I don't discriminate so you know I will just as much love uh, like a folk song as I will love a, a new Justin Bieber song that comes out if the song is good to me it's good and I, I you know it's it's funny um even stuff even the really quirky songs that come out you know that 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 you wouldn't think somebody who was like into serious songwriters would like I just think you know people take for granted how hard it is to write those kind of things so uh, yeah, I'm a huge song fan. And, and your own songs then as well, there seems to be such meaning behind them. Um, whether it's your own experience, I suppose, or your families or your friends or whatever. So when you're writing a song, do you think, um, for an example, when I listen to something like Please Don't Go, which I know is very personal to you, I think of when I was visiting my grandmother when she was up in Marymount and things like that. And I'm sure other people, when they listen to it, it hits home with them when you're writing a song. Like that, do you think this is really, like people are going to be able to relate with this? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think some probably, if I'm being really honest, I think some, even when you're writing them, resonate more than others. Uh, and I would count that, like even songs that I've put out myself that I could be like, I can always tell a song that I, that I felt very deeply when I'm, you know, when I'm talking about it on radio or wherever I'm talking about it because some songs are just like story songs and they're like they're just good songs because they feel good but other songs have again like you said you know that depth of like of meaning and you know when I wrote Please Don't Go and um, I was actually after visiting a friend of mine who was in hospital who was really sick at the time we just didn't know what was wrong with him and I just was like petrified it just brought me back to like that one huge loss that I had had in my life you know and just I suppose for Please Don't Go it's like and I always say this when I'm playing the song at gigs, it's like anybody who's ever experienced a huge loss or like in, in a very intense grief kind of knows that feeling. And then I suppose knows the fear attached to losing other people. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote Please Don't Go, I had the whole thing written in like 40 minutes. It's a very simple song, you know, yeah. but I, I, I felt it so, it, it was just like a, you know, I yeah. think I tried to write a lot of songs before that about grief and about loss and about what I had gone through and I'd never ever nailed it down and that that for me I haven't really written a song um about that since really because uh, I just think I feel like I kind of got all that off my chest if that makes sense yeah definitely and when you released it did you expect it to blow up the way it did um no, not, not the way that it did, no. I mean, I think that when we did the video, so like I, the song had been out for about, it had been out for a year before I put out the video. Yeah. And uh, I, I had really hit a crossroads with everything where I was just like, I was really trying hard to break into any sort of scene here in Ireland. And I just thought I was just not, it was not happening for me. I, was, I wasn't like quite pop enough, I don't think, for like to be super pop and be on the radio. Right. I wasn't quite folk enough to sit on other stations. So... I was about ready to, to just pack it in. I was, you know, I was, um, I was, yeah, I was like teaching guitar at the time and I was, you know, really, I was really kind of getting quite a bit from that and I was not getting so much back from 
the original music. So I, in the end, I was like, I'm going to make one more music video. I'm going to make one music video and I'm going to do it for Please Don't Go because that's the one thing that I really feel like I connect to the most. And if I do that one thing, then I feel like I'll have done myself justice, if that makes right, sense. I didn't right. choose the, the, the biggest pop track on there. Mm -hmm. I chose the, the slowest, saddest song. So I think with the song, when we made the video, I realized on the day when we were filming it and in the edit, I was like, this is really special. You know, yeah. this is not just an everyday thing that we've created here. And it was just created in this tiny little room yeah. with people that I knew, just a really like beautiful team of people who could make, who could only make that happen. If that makes sense, there was nothing yeah. attached to it. And um, I just, but I, you know, no way can you, you can never, I think when something kind of goes, you know, viral, like you can never ever prepare yourself for that, what that feels like. And the intensity of it, you know, it's it's very, very, um, it's very overwhelming. And when you had the success with that, and even looking at it today, it's up around six million plays on Spotify, which when mm. you think of only four and a half million people in this country, it's obviously gone, gone yeah. fire beyond Ireland at this stage. And um, is there a pressure then to like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? Um, well, I think for me, like it, everything kind of, happened very quickly after after that video went out so like within a week I was in LA uh, meeting labels if that's how these things work you know you have like a golden moment and then all of a sudden it's like you know so yeah. I ended up signing a signing a, a record deal in the UK with Warner and I suppose in that sense the pressure was taken off because I was you know I was writing with lots of different people right I was getting in with producers and stuff like that so it wasn't it wasn't a crazy amount of pressure I think it's very strange. I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day. When you have a viral moment, you know, there, I think there is a part of you sometimes that when you put out stuff after it and it doesn't quite go, yeah. you, there's, a, there's almost like a, even if it does really, really well, it just doesn't have the same intensity. And I think it's like, it's important to try not to chase that. I think that's something I had to learn. It's yeah. like to, try, to not try and recreate anything because you can never tell and you can never um I think when you try to engineer things and I, I figured that out pretty early on before I released another track after Peace Don't Go I was like I'm not going to try and reverse engineer what we did with Peace Don't right, Go I'm not right. going to make a similar video I'm just going to make something that's standalone and just keep doing that and that served me pretty well I think up to this point absolutely and like you said with Please Don't Go you kind of re-released it from where it had been like released first and we saw last week you put out Sorry with the wonderful video that people sent you in some things. Where did the idea for that first come about? So, you know, I was in lockdown and um, Sorry is just one of my favourite songs that I've, that I've ever written. I remember leaving the writing session that day being like, I just love this song. It just feels to me like just a, just a, you know, I just, it's just one of those ones. I just love playing it. I love singing it. And we have this version, we've had this version with the, because there's a gospel choir, the London gospel choir are on right. the actual recording that we did release, uh, you know, about, it was about a year and a half ago, I think. Yeah. And then um, we, I just said, I've always wanted to do a version with just piano, me and them. Right. So I was like, I'm going to do that. And then with lockdown, I was just like, I kind of had a, you know, a bit of spare time. And I was like, how do I, what do I do here? And so I was like, I'm just going to ask people what they what they think because I'd seen like a couple of videos of, um, of you know like all these moments of people kind of being isolated but they they weren't I suppose they weren't saying anything yeah you were only able to see like what was happening but you weren't actually able to see what they were thinking so right um I just put the word out and it got some great answers back you know really thought-provoking because everyone's in the same boat and like it took me a long time to get it all together um but I'm very proud of it you know and it was it it just for me it kind of marks the occasion of of this entire thing uh, yeah. and i think it kind of sums it up pretty well as well what everyone's kind of feeling the, the worries and the sort of overall yeah. vibe of lockdown yeah and when you talk about everyone being in it together another one of your songs i suppose a hundred like me which when you think of mental health and which will is a problem as it stands mm -hmm. uh, and we'll talk about the piada house thing in a minute but um when we do start to reopen the economy and we do people start to get back to somewhat the new normal as they call it and um, there's going to be a lot of people suffering from mental health because we are social animals and it's it's having an effect on people so a song like a uh, hundred like me must really start to resonate with people a bit more now as well 
Yeah, I've had a couple of requests for for that to be used in different like uh, projects the last couple of weeks, and I do I, I agree with you. I think it's um, you know, I think we're underestimating the effect that it's all going to have on people. And you know, like I said in that post, I, I wrote a post to do with the sorry video. Was like, you know, we're really really going to have to look after each other in the next couple of months, uh, and realize that people are going to be struggling. You know, and whether that's like financial or emotional or you know just worry. You know. I know a lot of people who, um, who live, you know, who live with people who are vulnerable, and it, they they don't really know what the future looks like at the moment. Yeah. You know, they, while everyone else returns to normal, how do how do they if there's still sort of a you know a kind of a looming thing? It's it's just a very strange and bizarre time. Um. So yeah, like with music, like I'm getting ready to start putting out more music now. Um. Again, stuff that I feel like has that human element. Uh. And like, that's all I can do. You know what I mean? That's, I mean, I can do that and I can do like little bits of things for charity. There's nothing much else that I can do to change anything. But if people kind of get something from the songs and like that's, it's a very mutual sort of a uh, good thing. You know, it's good for me and it's good for them, so. Yeah, and it is going to be important that everyone looks out for each other. And I think Cork is kind of good in that way anyway. Cork people are, Pretty good Very much so. when they need it in the community, the community kind of comes together. So, agree, um, yeah, one hundred percent. So, with that, like you're saying, Charlie, you have a wonderful kind of fundraiser going for Pieta House until the fifth of June, where yep. if people go in, we'll put the link up on the video, and that if people go in Great. and they donate ten euro or more, they win for a draw, and mm -hmm. the prize is you'll come to their house and play a little concert for them. Yes, uh, so I came up with the idea, you know, around the time I was doing the sorry videos, like I want to do something with this in conjunction with PA because I know, like, it's just a very important, uh, it's a very important charity, uh, it's a very important body that we have here, um, and we have to support them and make sure that 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 they stay open, um, for the next couple of, you know, like for what for the foreseeable future, basically. So I am, um, yeah, I'm giving away a house gig. So like, I mean, to be honest with you. And I've said this because like, I've done lots of like radio interviews this week and I'm like, this is great for me too, because I'm not going to be like, I'm not looking at playing a gig until uh, like next February. Yeah. So I, I will very much enjoy whoever, whoever wins this prize, I'll very much enjoy. And it'll just be a really intimate, non-invasive, um, just teen songs. Yeah. yeah and a couple, a couple of members of the band, <laughs> like, like, literally a sing song, a hundred percent, a sing song, very casual. But I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And I think, you know, it's something different for, you know, gigs are going to be weird for a long time. Yeah. Um, and there's some great ideas coming out, like with the drive through gigs and stuff like that. So yeah. it's just, yeah, it's, it's another little way of kind of connecting with people again, I think. And even in the video that you released there for Sorry, if there was a few people when they talk about what they're missing is live music. And yeah. I know myself, I miss seeing live music. But for you as an artist, it must be really tough not being able to perform. It's, it is tough, um, you know, and obviously because of my job, like any other person, I have lots of friends who are doing the same job mm -hmm. uh, at, at varying levels, whether it's, you know, playing bigger, like big, huge gigs or mm -hmm. people who are playing in pubs. And it's, it's a very, very worrying time, I think, for musicians because... A lot of the time anyway, it's a job that people don't tend to 100% understand yeah. the way the inner workings of it and how people earn money from it and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long couple of months for, for musicians all over the country. Um, so, you know, again, the conversation, I suppose, at some point will, will turn to trying to look out for people, trying mm -hmm. to support people where they can if they're doing lives, you know, to try and, you know, maybe, I don't know. I think a couple of people have had had like GoFundMe's and stuff like that because it is going to be weird and it's it's a very weird thing to think that it could be. I mean, who knows how long before gigs go back to normal? Like yeah. that's just weird. It's yeah, just yeah, it, it's one of those things where social distancing at a gig would be the strangest thing ever. So I don't know how they're going to how they're like, going to work the that one out. Yeah, and the best part of being at a gig, like you know, when you're at like whether it's a big or a small gig and everyone's yeah. just packed in together yeah. it's it, there's nothing like it you know so yeah. i'm hoping that it all settles down like everybody else and um, we oh. just have I, yeah and i think as well like you know 
everybody's in the same boat uh, in some shape or form. So it kind of makes it easier that no nobody's isolated in, in the difficulty of the whole thing. So Exactly. And I suppose one of the things that you have in lockdown when people have free time, a good thing people could do is maybe try and find some of the local musicians in their area that maybe they haven't heard of before and listen to them, support them, and yeah, when things do all up, go to their gigs. Yeah, for sure, 100%. So um, i got to ask you just a couple more quick questions. Um, go for it. You've done a, a number of cover songs mm-hmm. over the years, um, some of them wonderful, wonderful, but uh, if there was one person you could collaborate with, who would it be? Uh, off the top of my head, um, I think uh, Coldplay. I love Coldplay. Coldplay. Uh, it's not even like they're my favourite band, but if, at the top of my head, Coldplay, I just would love to uh, to do something with them. Chris, Chris Martin playing the piano. Oh, Chris yes. Miller. It's <laughs> everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, just finally, in terms of um, what music are you currently listening to yourself in lockdown? Um, I've been listening to a lot of a guy called Phineas. So like People might have heard him. He's Billie Eilish's brother. He plays the piano with her all the time. But he has his own project, uh, which I just love. I love the songs. Um, what else have I been listening to? Uh, I've been listening a lot to Harry Styles' new album, actually. Yeah. It's really, re- it's, a, it's a brilliant album. Uh, so I'm really enjoying that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's weird. Uh, I, because I'm doing so much writing, I try my best not to listen to too much music. Right, right. <laughs> I panic. It's just that, that blind panic of like, am I am I writing a song that I heard in the car two days ago? So yeah. I haven't been listening to a whole pile of stuff, but I've been yeah. writing a lot. So, uh, but they're the two things that I do listen to when I am taking a little sneaky yeah. and music break. Right. Do you have any idea so finally when, when your music might be coming out? Roughly. I do. Tentatively, I would say July. Okay. Um, which actually seemed so far away uh, three months ago when we put that date in the diary yeah. and now it's like it's yeah, really really soon we're so. in June. <laughs> yeah and I can't wait and there's just I just have a ton of stuff ready to go so um, yeah it's just going to be just a, a lot of music that I've worked really hard on that I'm very very excited for people to hear so wonderful so, stuff thanks so much for taking time out to join us and thank have you a, Stephen have a chat with us. And, uh, the you're best so welcome you too